Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome to another week of Fronos Photo Raw Talk. And this time we're on location in New York City, overlooking the Hudson River. And uh, first time Adam's joining me. Adam, thank you for joining me this week. It's great to be here. And we are at your friend's place, and now my friend Juan Patino. Hola. Thank you uh, for letting us into your home here. No speak no English. No speak no English. Hablas español? No. Uh, uh, no. Un poquito. Okay. Un poquito, a little bit. A little bit. I got that much down. So we have recorded a podcast. It is really one of the best ones that we've done so far. I loved the flow of it. It was great to have Adam here. Juan has some amazing stories about not only his photography, well, not just about photography, but we start off in, in a little bit with music, what uh, touring he's done as background singer. Background singer? Sure. Background singer and Bongo player? Sure. That's a percussion instrument. That is, yeah. Um, there... But all along, since growing up, his mother was a photographer. Uh, he's his moved. Brother. Your brother. Right. I, yeah, we talk about that too. Right. But his photography and how his being in the studio with musicians has really helped his photography. So it's it's really a fun podcast. Check it out on iTunes. Juan, did you did you enjoy yourself? I had a ball. I'd like to re-record it. Re-record. Yeah, I took some notes, and I, I just some of the things that you said. I want to tighten up a little bit. Oh yeah, I have some ideas. Of, I'm kidding. I was off. I was <laughs> off beat a little bit. Yeah. No, I thought it was really fun, and I I look forward to uh, doing it again. Yeah, I, I'm just amazed at how much of a sharp tongue you have, and how much cursing you do. Mm. Oh yes, Shit, yeah. I think there was like one, yeah. one whole one, curse. One F bomb. Yeah. And I then we talked. You have to, to wait for it. It's at, at what, like 30, 42 minutes, 42 or something? Dash yeah. 12. Profanity is good because it adds emphasis. And if you can hold it back. You don't want to overdo ooh. it. Yeah. It's kind of like when like Mariah goes to those high parts. Yeah. She does it too much. If she much. did it just a little just bit. Too much. Well, too much. so I'm going to wrap this intro yeah. up because we'll save it. I'm going to ask you to stay. I'm going to yes. ask you to stay oh, here. Nice. And, uh. Well, not right here. Click that link below here on I iTunes, on YouTube. It's going to take you over to the thefronosphoto.com slash podcast where you can download this week's MP3. Or it's really cool if you subscribe on iTunes because you will automatically have each episode, hopefully as long as it's working well, sent to you automatically as they come out on Mondays because when you're subscribed, you get them a day early before I actually release them to everybody else on the Facebook and everywhere else like that so guys thank you very much all you guys out there stay tuned and we'll see you in a couple seconds hey fro nation welcome to another week of fronos photo raw talk and this week we hit the road that's right Ari and I packed our bags we hopped on a train to New York City and we met up with Adam Lerner for a podcast with one of his longtime friends, Juan Patino. Juan is a really, really interesting guy with a heavy background in music, as well as photography. He's toured with bands like Hall and Oates. So the Hall and Oates references are flying. He's worked with musicians uh, very closely, such as, well, this lady has written, um, she sings one of my favorite karaoke songs. And that's Lisa Loeb. She sings Stay. So he had a big hand in working with her on that album when that was released in the 90s. But he has some amazing stories. I think this is one of my favorite podcasts so far because you get to sit there and listen to stories about artists that you've you've only thought about and maybe never photographed like Hall and & Oates. And, and I just, I mean, I love Hall & Oates. You can't stop listening to all of that stuff, you know, because she's a man-eater and... Sarah Smile and all that good stuff. But Juan is a really, really interesting guy. We actually got to go out to dinner with him later. And, you know, the stories that he tells, we're going to have to have him on again because I don't know if an hour is long enough to really capture everything that Juan has done or is continuing to do today. So Adam joins me. Ari's there as well. We're in New York City to do this podcast with Juan Patino. So if you guys would just stick around a little longer, we're going to get right to that podcast in a minute. And don't forget, if this is your first time listening to one, please subscribe on iTunes so that you can automatically be delivered the new episode of the podcast each Monday when we try to get them up at noon for you guys who are subscribers. And then we don't promote it out to everybody else until Tuesdays and then you get it early. So getting it early is a good thing. So there you have it. 
I also want to remind you that this week's podcast is brought to you by Allenscamera.com. Allenscamera.com is your place to pick up any Nikon, Canon, or other gear, whether you want some used items or new items, or whether you're looking for that D600, which I'm loving, by the way. I'm really enjoying that camera. Or when the Canon 6D comes out, you can get one there or on reserve or something like that. Uh, And if you're in the United States, you can shop at allenscamera.com. If you've got questions about them, you can give them a call, 215. I almost gave out my own number. 215-547-2841. That's Allen's Camera. And also want to thank VBO Poker Table for their support with helping me get a poker table, which is now currently in storage in a pod waiting for me to move into my new place. So there you have it, guys. Enjoy this week's Raw Talk. Anyway, New York City, nice to get out of Philly to go do a podcast. And and is this the first time, I think, Adam, that you and I are sitting together to actually record a podcast? Yeah. Is that correct? It's uh, about time. I know. We we did the Euro tripping. We did the others, but via Skypey McSkyperson. And uh, so why don't you introduce our our special guest today, being that you guys are longtime friends. Okay. Our uh, esteemed guest is somebody that I've known for a long time. Yes. Um, a uh, Nobel Prize winning um, laureate uh, oh, candidate. I like where this is headed. Um, who couldn't be with us today, but instead we've <laughs> got uh, Grammy award winning um, producer That's right. and uh, photographer and extraordinary dude, Juan Patino. Thank you. I, I, uh, won't, I hope I can live up to that description. And I'm happy to be here. And welcome to New York City. Thanks for having us. This is it's cool to come out here and do this. I mean, we met briefly years ago. We did. I think it was more impactful for me than for you because every time I I've mentioned it to you since you walked in, you're looking at me like it was at a party and and I was just some chick that was into you. But the truth is, or you made a fantastic, or maybe you were into me. You made a terrific impression. We were at the um, Spectrum in Philadelphia on closing night. And you and I had the distinction or the honor of photographing not only the Hooters, but um, Todd Rundgren did a phenomenal show that night. I actually didn't photograph him. Don't tell him. I have enough pictures from that that you can take some for yourself. Yeah. And uh, I was there to shoot Hall & Oates. I'd been uh, doing a lot of photography for them in that, toward the end of that summer. There's a longer story behind that if you'd like. I'd love to hear all the stories about Hall & Oates. I mean, I love myself some Hall and Oates. You do. I really do. Well, you're also a, a Pennsylvania guy from life, right? So yeah. that would make sense. Yeah. That's their hometown. Yeah, that's where they met. I love that story. No, I mean, you toured with them. I did that summer, specifically 09. Um, a buddy of mine couldn't keep his gig. He's been the main harmony singer, percussionist for a long time. And I got the call and he said, can you uh, sing hi like a little girl? And I said come over bring me some tracks and let's see what you're doing on the show and uh, we sang together for a while and set up my my conga drums i have a recording studio in midtown and uh, we sort of faked a whole we cloned his percussion rig from what he has on stage and it went pretty quickly he just said enough i'm going to italy you're going out on tour with hollow notes for the rest of the summer and so you you were singing you weren't actually taking but did you take pictures as well well that's the that's the fairy tale of it and and that i'll try and keep this under 90 seconds but what happened was um i had been uh, i've been shooting my whole life and i had been shooting uh specifically that summer um quite a bit and and in probably the I don't know, five to six years before that, I would never go anywhere without a camera. And sometimes I would be hired to do portraits or do, but more than anything, I'm usually at that time, I was usually just hired to either um, produce records or to mix them. And in this particular summer, I, the needle tipped much further over towards just shooting people. And of course I had the cameras with me through the tour and I would, um, I was somewhat, I tried to be a sniper, fly on the wall, non-invasive, and just capture 
the goings ons of the day and life on the road. And well, that's the best way to. Do. I mean, you're in the band, right? Basically, so you access can do anything was off you the want. hook. Yeah, I mean that that's the that's thing right. that most of us have strived for right. forever right. is to be accepted into right. the you know behind the velvet rope, right. on the tour bus, right. getting the access that most people don't get. And I mean, right. I've had the same thing with Perry Farrell right. and guys like that, where right. it's just pretty awesome. But with right. Hall and Oates, do they do they sing together? Like off the road are they together at all they or? uh at that time it didn't seem very they don't like get this was a job chummy. for them basically. yeah yeah yeah. well because yeah. you you know in philly the uh during the welcome day or the the july 4th yeah it was daryl hall yeah and then there's the oats guy but it's yeah. not oats <laughs> right, right you know it's the guy who's you know okay i guess yeah. oats yeah. didn't need to be there because yeah. the other guy's going she's gone you know yeah, and yeah. like yeah. oh how was that was that good that was pretty good Sign that was very high like a little that? girl. Yeah. I can be high like a little girl. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of my next album. So um so long incredibly long story short, I had the um the access, I think is the word you used, to um to befriend the band and specifically I just had these great really rare opportunities to photograph um uh, John Oates and Daryl Hall and um it's something it sort of set off a trigger for me of well i'm much happier making these portraits and um the the highlight of that trip was right at, after closing night we ended in california somewhere in, in um i don't know san diego or something and should I stay closer yeah and uh i i had for whatever uh turn of events i it turned out that i would be flying home with daryl on his jet on his awesome. plane right so it was his uh tour you're like manager. no thanks sorry yeah i, I was actually like, no, i prefer my coach flight that yeah, you that be, already bought me I, I actually secured row yeah. 36 right next right. to the bathroom right. so well that's kind of like our europe trip 36 right next to the yeah. bathroom because <laughs> nice. we were in fourth class by the way that's a yeah. whole different story which i want to hear um so i ended up just flying home with him and uh of course i had all my cameras i never they never leave my side it was his tour manager daryl and myself and we photographed a lot of the flight home a couple of hours from I have California. To say, some of the most classic image i've seen images i've seen like yeah. you know you've got led zeppelin on the planes rolling stones right rolling stones but then you've got yeah. things that jim marshall did with mama cass right. eating eating on a plane which yeah. ended up being the end of her but it wasn't yeah. that time yeah. um but i love those the final shots. sandwich yeah. Yeah, yeah the final sandwich because yeah. how many people actually get to be on i i have not been on a private jet yeah. with a musician to capture them yeah. At 36,000 feet. I'm actually going to book one so that you and I can do that. We can do that? We'll bring everyone that's here. We can podcast yeah. from 37,000 yeah. feet. Yeah. It's really fun. And it felt like, you know, this is decades after the really exciting classic rock had died. But I did drink some champagne on the plane, and I was had the 85-millimeter lens crammed into the distant corner of this little... Let's talk G about Ford. that. Uh, the gear wise, what do you what do you shoot with? I shoot with a D seven hundred mostly. Um, I have a I own a D seven thousand, which is sort of a backup camera. And uh, my mom was a, I grew up uh, as her assistant. She was a portrait photographer in New Jersey my whole life, and so she shot Hasselblad only, and had the, also a great collection, which I think I've shown Adam these old Topcon cameras that. Maybe you've heard of from Japan. Mm -hmm. Beautiful 1960s uh, classic film cameras with a lens collection that you wouldn't believe. And, um, and but yeah, nowadays I just shoot with a D700, kind of trying to make the leap to medium format. But, but with, you, you've been yeah. shooting all along, ever yeah. since you can remember. Yeah, ever since, I was a, ever since I was a kid. And specifically when I first got to New York, I was here uh, right after college with the the now legendary Adam Lerner, I raced to New York City as an actor, and I was here to audition and chase the dream, and uh, that went really poorly for that first summer, and I chickened out and went to work in um, music recording studios, because I had been recording bands a lot in college. And, and, and did anybody from college turn into anything? Um, some of the people, you mean as far as like acting, or as far as <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Adam turned into something else. Yeah. Oh, you mean the booby vel uh, Buddha yeah. velvets? That's right. He turned into or a secondhand gu guitar Dan. superstar. Secondhand Dan. Second Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Look him up on Spotify. It's a good album, actually. That's right. Well, yeah, Juan and I actually we um, we knew each other from college, and right. he lived in a house with a bunch of dudes that were like, they're all really eccentric. Yeah. And Juan was no exception. And I remember Juan had this drum kit, and somehow like 
with a four track because I had a four track yeah. too and I was like you know banging out songs on my own and I played in like five different bands I played Wilberfest and the mm-hmm. Stone Balloon and I'd go up to Wilmington and play with Montana Wild Axe yeah. and like all that kind of stuff at the time and I remember going over there and um, I mean stories are just flooding my head right now but yeah. one of them particularly was when you know you were just we were just hanging out and you started playing the drums and I was like I didn't even know you were like a musician right and he you know and I, th- I really thought of him as a singer and he plays the drums like amazingly well like oh. all full of style and then you played me some recording that you made and I'm like how did you even record that like I have a four track I get the whole idea and so I'm I you know I guess that's where you're yeah flattery will get you everything. I didn't even realize at the time that you were even a photographer yeah because well, I had been a photographer at that time and so, so you're a man of many talents uh, it's um, that f- the phrase that we all grew up on. I think everyone at the table is. I mean, we grew up thinking, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm the Renaissance. I am the future, but I am an accumulation of the past." And it, and what you end up doing is, if you play it right, you can. I don't know that I've mastered any of those of the accolades you just described to me. I don't think I've really um, gone as far as I'm capable of in any one of those few. But you I, did say Grammy, right? He did, but now, in case anyone's fact checking, I am a Grammy, a twice Grammy nominee, but not a winner. And I, you're a winner to me. Oh, that's sweet. Can you say what you were nominated for? I was nominated for some Lisa Loeb records that I, she and I started out uh, recording together in, here in New York, and we had a uh, a song. We had a hit single called "Stay." Uh, no. Oh, that one. We did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Heard I told Ari, you know, it's a karaoke yeah. song for me. Nice. Um, I try. So that's that's actually a. It's a much longer story for another day, but the the cliff notes of that is that we, she and I were just getting started on some demos, and uh, that particular song was one of maybe 12, 11 or 12 songs that we were working on. And uh, and the, a friend put it into his movie. They were making this movie called Reality Bites. His friend? His friend. His friend. <laughs> who, who is? Her, her then neighbor, uh, Ethan Hawke, had invited her to... Uh, he just said, Give me, I love that tune. We were at a gig at the Bitter End or whatever. And he said, that sounds like, that song feels like this movie that I'm finishing with uh, a guy named Ben Stiller. And said, cool. cool. Well, can yeah, you? Cool. So we gave him a cassette. And Wait. I'm doing Blue Steel right now. Yeah. Oh, that's and, nice. and from what yeah. I remember, like Lisa, she hadn't really toured. She hadn't really made a lot of records. She, yeah, she, she was she, relatively kind of new on the music scene. So you she, really kind of got her in a real formative in her well, career. that's that's uh, that's sweet of you to say, but she actually had been a campus hero at both at, at Brown University. She was. I just a, meant a like in like the whole star. club, like music. Yeah, scene. here she was just kind of. I caught her when she was moving into the solo, just by her by herself with right. the guitar, and, and we were just lucked out. We had a great chemistry. I had dinner with her last night. She's doing great. She has two kids and making kids' records. And <laughs> that's awesome. Could, yeah, she I, couldn't be better. How do you make the transition from? you know, doing the recordings and, and being in the studio and did you, you had your camera all along, but now you're pushing that. Yeah. Well, the, the transition has been, um, it's been very, I hate when people use the word organic, but it's been very organic. Meaning that as I was recording with folks, I was all for at least the last five years or longer, I'd say like 10 years, I was usually more interested in just photographing them. Because recording started feeling like, and I don't want to disrespect anybody that I've collaborated with in the music studio, but at, there was a portion, and maybe you guys have gone through this in some career or another, where it didn't. It started feeling like work. Yeah. And the beauty of making music, or the the being awarded the privilege of making music and getting paid to do it, is that's a phenomenal luxury. And I started getting a little scared that I wasn't as connected to the creative process. Or to the, it just felt like going to work. Sure. Which it had never felt like during childhood. I was always making tracks. I was always doing photography, either either making videos or uh, shooting portraits with my mom. Or um, I should also mention that my of my eight siblings, um, my next of kin brother is a also a superstar photographer, and I used also loosely because I didn't mean that I'm a superstar photographer. I meant that he. So he's a. Um, He's been a big deal for a long time, and he just shoots Broadway and a bunch of theater stuff and dance. And so I used to assist him as well. And um, 20 years ago, he got me a lot of photo assisting jobs. So I spent about mm. three or four years in and out of 
making music and making TV jingles and writing songs. Um, my day job was as a photo assistant, and I lived in photo studios from probably 80, I'm going to date myself now, but from 89 till about 93, I would I would just commute back and forth between a still life place and uh, this other fashion photographer that I well, that, that's, spent a lot of time with. Yeah, that, that's pretty interesting, and um, the access that you get, I mean, you were in music, yeah. so... W- you you knew these guys. You were on the inside, and we talk about that all the time. Right. You just pick up the camera, start shooting, and right. what did, has that led to other than the Hall & Oates type thing? What other people have you gone out with or worked well, with? Well, I haven't actually gone out on the road with other bands. I, I do tend to... Uh, I have, I've been blessed with um, relationships. A lot of my friendships in New York City are with music types. So I end up on any random Tuesday. I think you and I have talked about... Um, my buddy Jesse Harris, Adam and I might have discussed this, but I have a couple of friends. One guy that comes to mind in particular, his name is Jesse Harris. He's a songwriter and uh, also a Grammy nominee. The distinction with him is he actually won. That's yeah, the, he nom- he, he was nominated and then he won. He was not. Yes, he had better follow through. Anything? Anything we'd know? He, you might know. Yeah. He had made this. Uh, he had written a bunch of songs for that first Nora Jones record. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So he wrote the big hit. Don't was know he the why. bass player in the band? He was the guitarist. The gu- the I remember acoustic. something about that. He, yeah. Somebody used to date her or someone along yeah. the line. Yeah. Well, that was the bass player. She did. That it. was the bass yeah. player. See, yeah. I had something. That was my first Rolling Stone gig, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Was wow. photographing Nora Jones on that no first tour. How about that? In like two. Th- well, it was film, so it was. It was film. Yeah. So it was two thousand and two or three. Yeah. When her first oh, thing two, came out, but anyway, two thousand two. Yeah. But then, yeah. So I mentioned him just um, out of respect because there's this thing where like I, I chose Tuesday as an example but there, there's just a there's often a last minute phone call somewhere around 11 p.m. of everyone's showing up with guitars at my house get down here and and let's hang out you know and it yeah. turns into a party but in that you have the love affairs come out of that and friendships and all those people are are in the arts and I'm sure you've been through this in yeah. Philly and I know Adam has people like to be documented so when you're in the act of making stuff and whether it's painting or strumming playing drums or whatever people like to have proof artists like to have proof that they existed and it because we all look yeah. for um that approval yeah you, yeah we as artists Absolutely. we all want to know that we we're either doing well yeah or we or if somebody likes what we're doing yeah that's absolutely right and the, it's uh, just a it's a symbiotic relationship uh, I'm, I'm not saying anything you guys don't know it's a, it's a very um mutually beneficial relationship where mm. people like to be witnessed and they like to be documented. Sure. And so, th- so when Jared asks, how do you try and chronicle the transition from music producer to, to um, working photographer for me, the, the first, again, the first word that came to mind is it's been an organic evolution. I was just making music and the day that that didn't feel as compelling to me anymore as making pictures, I turned all of my attention to making pictures. And and um, I'd say people have responded nicely. And I have this just a, a world of people that trust me in New York. And if they're going to have an album cover done or a gig photographed, why not have your buddy Juan do it? Sure. Um, and the danger to that, of course, is that the call usually begins with, I don't have a lot of money, but dot, dot, dot. Well, that's, that that's leads very us. very dangerous. We get glitch. that all the time. Yeah. yeah. We get that all the time. We'd love you to shoot this, yeah. but we don't, have a, we don't have a budget. Or mm-hmm. we could give you like a couple bucks. And we've, yeah. we know that in the music industry, not a lot of people want to pay for things. Yeah. I mean, they may take you on their private jet every once in a while. Right. But, <laughs> if, you know, how do you do it? Do you, you love photography that much? You just, I mean, like. No. No, no, I'm t- I'm a complete whore, and I've gotten to the point where I'm very aggressive. And I honestly, I'll, I'll do a lot of kidding here, but in, I've become very specific with people, and I say, if you need this level of photography, and I'll show them a sampling of what what an inner sleeve CD booklet. Not that people are going to need CD booklets in a minute. Right. Actually, as it was like two years ago, nobody. But you show them some album covers, show them some portraits, show them some street shooting, and you know just. Uh, cool stuff you know this is this is what i can do for you and here's the price and i think you and i just had this conversation about someone's gig that you had photographed a month ago or six weeks ago you had shot someone was going to use some of your live photos of his thing yeah 
that it really that uh, the process of pricing that out is a painful and excruciating one for me because it's it's usually someone that I know or someone's friend. It's really of a hard friend. to charge somebody yeah. that you are, have a friendship with because right. they're your friend and and right. My thing is that I try to barter whenever possible. Mm-hmm. Like I just got solicited by a good friend of mine. Um, she's you know an amazing singer songwriter. Oh. She plays ukulele. Solicited, and she's got this incredible singing voice, yeah. and she's just really got great energy and great vibes, yeah. and needs some photos done. And you know wanted you know said how much whatever, and I just said you know look let's maybe figure out a way to barter. Uh, you know she does a lot <laughs> of writing. She does a lot of there's there's a lot of things that she's you know. This sounds naughty. It's not. This doesn't. This isn't going down that path. Yeah, it's it? not. We're not even approaching that path. Okay, cool. Um, but the, and then there's the occasion, like you know, with my buddy who I shot some live shots that turned out to be the, his favorite shots that were right. ever shot of him, and he just said, "Look, tell me what you need so I can use them on an EP." He just right. immediately un- he understands the value of photography. He understands right. how much they meant to him, right. and I set a price. You know, we talked about mm-hmm. it, and he agreed to it, and it was that. And you know what? Simple. A lot of times when somebody comes to you and they want to use the images and they say, what can we do to make this work? Right. They go in with a different mindset yes. than I don't have a lot of money. Right. You know, like I've done this when it came to cutting some some video, having a video editor do it. It was something I didn't have a lot of money for. I mm-hmm. went to him and said, look, I don't have a lot of money, but this is what I can spend. Can you do it? Right. You know, because I came out offering right to offering something not just asking him to do it for nothing right and he ended up doing it and it led to us working together and him making more money out of actual jobs i could afford to pay him for exactly that's a great approach and it 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 eliminates the strain of saying i'm about to offend you by undervaluing what you're worth right if you approach if you come up with the number first and say if excuse me if the artist comes forward and says i need pictures you seem to make cool looking stuff I've got 500 bucks. Can we, can you help me? You See, know? I had, a, I had a, an unfortunate misunderstanding recently with an artist who needed some f- portrait stunt of him and his music writing partner. Yeah. And I came in low end because he's a good guy. And I know, you know, from what I gathered, there wasn't a lot of money and I was so far off from their budget. Yeah. Their budget was just, their budget wouldn't have even covered production expenses. Right. Right. But it, we left on a good note. Yeah. You know, obviously I'd love to collaborate with the guy because I've collaborated with him musically. Right. So there is, but had he just said to me, okay, you know what, Adam, I've got X dollars and here's what I need. The photo shoot probably could have worked out, but we were so far apart because of the kind of communication. And I think that's a tough thing. If I could add to that, I um, last week got a call um, for somebody that I've known for many years. He's a artist manager. He manages actresses and he's a talent manager and an amazing guy and a, a gentleman and I've been talking to him about finding some room for collaboration w- without actually saying, Hey man, get me some work. I've, I've known him. We've been chatty for about three years and we've never really had an opportunity to do any work together. I've, I haven't offered him any photography. Um, and he called uh, just recently and said, can you, I think I found our opportunity. I've got a great thing. Are you free next week? Um, and he said, what would it cost to have you just, you know, for an afternoon uh, to do these? I want to do multiple scenarios of an actress that I'm representing. And so we talked about what he needed and and he was he, he left it up to me as for me to put the number down on the table first. And I I really don't like working for free at all. And I don't I, I just don't like the idea of. For me, there's so much heavy lifting in post. Um, I don't just shoot and hand over pictures. And I, think I don't I've think confesses. any of us do that. Yeah, not we anymore don't. anyways, yeah. Um, but for me, the the bulk of the heavy lifting is after the four or five hours of shooting. So it costs me another, and I, you guys are probably faster at this, but I could go easily two days going through a thousand pictures and finding 20 cool ones that deserve extra love. So I said to this guy, I, I want to I wanna work with you. So... When he asked, "Well, what would that cost?" I said, um, "I said a thousand bucks." And then I was on the phone with him, and I kind of I heard his reluctance and his. I heard him pull away a little bit. If that's something you can hear, mm-hmm. and uh, and he said, "Oh, Juan, man!" I and he used man. You know, when guys start using man, it's like I thought we were, I thought uh, we had something uh, here. So I felt terrible. I said, "Well." And immediately I'm backpedaling thing. Well, I could do it for seven. Uh, are you still right. there? And what do you do? Total say $5,000 will pay you? No, he said, I wish. 
Uh, and, he went the other way. He went way the other way. He said, no, no, no. I, I was just like, I'm just trying to get some stuff off the ground for this actress. And I was thinking maybe, I don't know, it's like 50 bucks for the, for, oh. Oh, and, uh, for an hour or two. And, and of course I won't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to make him look bad because he's a, he is a clever guy. He just, I think he thought he was saying, can I cover your sandwiches for that day? And we'll find a Saturday. So there's times, there's times that these guys need to just come out and say that. Yeah. Like, look, I don't have anything for this artist yeah. and I don't like playing the game of I've got people in the future that, you know, we may work together in the future because right. that's bullshit. Right. Yeah. Um, I hate I'll that believe shit. that when, you know what, take care of me on this deal and I'll take care of you the next time. Exactly. But in this case, and this is for anybody out there. There's there's a couple things you can do to make it easier on yourself because it is very hard to come up with a price when you don't know what somebody wants mm -hmm. and you don't know what they have. Mm -hmm. Throw it back at them. Yep. What what do you What's have? Your budget? What's your budget? Right. What are you willing to pay? Who is this client? You know what can you yeah. do? Because maybe it's a client you always always have wanted to work with right. that could lead to something more, and then you have to decide: is it worth your time to just right. set out and do it? Um, but it, but when somebody sits there and goes, "Ooh, you know, fifty bucks yeah. is what I was thinking," it's just like, "Look, are you gonna are you gonna roll out of bed for fifty bucks? Right. You you know, are you gonna take on a client for nothing and not take a point or anything?" Well, the thing is, is that exactly. he's obviously developing this artist, so he's gonna invest his time and sweat equity. Juan doesn't have any interest now. If this right. were somebody like the guy said, "You know what? Look, Cameron Diaz needs a couple of quick shots for this little thing. Right. We might not use it. It's gonna be shown to ten people in a boardroom tops. It's gonna be a right. quick thing. Do you have an hour?" Uh, I I, don't, I can cover your, your right. cab and your expenses. You're going to do it the answer is yes. because yeah. you're going to have images of right. somebody that you have a little bit of creative control over. Mm -hmm. well, I you think can potentially more use in your portfolio and you might even not even care about the money at that right. point. Well, mm -hmm. with Cameron Diaz, it would be more about, you know, not so much the photos, but you just get that sight line. Exactly. You can just look at her for a couple hours. <laughs> just sit there yeah. quietly. Let's all just take like, a little moment and think shoot. about that. Yeah. Uh, I just ask her about Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Right. I don't know why. Right. Yeah. But there's, there is that, <laughs> that consideration where it's like, you know, do I have creative control over this? Can I use it yeah. in my portfolio? And am I going to get paid? Well, and and if, Adam, you also know that when you start asking those questions, it scares these guys. This is what you ask anyway. No, this is what I ask myself. Yeah. And if I'm not hearing any of that stuff, then it's like, yeah, I'm not going to roll out a bit yeah. for that. It's just well, not fair. Let's Let's bring it into a music type of uh, world here. We talk about rights all the time. Right. You know, somebody wants you to record them. Was there back end that you would end up getting if you wrote with them or recorded with them? It's not the same with photography. It's not. That's a glitch in the system. And maybe one day it could move that way. Mm -hmm. uh, with music, certainly as a writer, you uh, that stuff all gets um, carefully delineated in contracts and you split the songwriting and that's called publishing and it's a gold mine when it works yeah when it hits it's a uh, it's literally some instances of it can be lottery winnings and with photography unfortunately there is no remuneration there's no legacy to the uh, except you know if it's a a cool Ansel Adams print and he right. captured it in Yosemite right at you know, that one afternoon. But he's not he's not around anymore to... He's uh, not. To, uh, to but I think that but in photography, the usage is more immediate in that you typically define those terms and they're not usually something that's over yeah. per perpetuity and that you own the copyright as a photographer in most right. cases right. and that you're basically leasing it out to so, mm -hmm. some degree yeah. for a period of three months or six months or a year or something of that nature. Yeah. So that's part of your fee. You know, it gets a little bit gray when you're working with friends who don't mm -hmm. understand photo shoots. But, you know, for professional gigs, album yeah. covers and stuff like that, that is a component of it. Yeah. That you're allowing, you know, like your buddy Jesse to use that image of right. yours, your right. copyright on his album. Right. Right. And in his case, uh, just in case he tunes into this, he's been extremely generous with me. So he always meets the my fee or you know, whatever numbers I put. Right. Forward. And you're okay. in, and in that case, it's awesome because awesome. he's a great dude. Yeah. You love collaborating with him, and he appreciates and values yeah. what good photography is worth. Yeah. There's 11 things that I want to say to you based on what you just said. The first one is, and it's not actually 11. Um, <laughs> the first one is 14. Can the you count down well, he does have 14? His, wait, wait. He does have his to-do list yes. there, and, and I'm sure they're all yeah. on there. I, I want you to, cut, I have to count down Cooper back. from 14 oh, sorry, in threes, yes. and then work your way back in twos. If we could do. Okay. But do it in double time? Yes. Uh, wait, uh, I don't. Uh, there we go. Uh, 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 I'll do so, the click track. Yeah. I'm doing it with my foot. I found rhythm in my foot. Nice. <laughs> we were flaming. Um, flimming. Flimming. So the first thing I want to say is that you just, um, you made a wonderful point and you reminded me of, I have a case in point, to uh, a case study that might help to support what you just said. 
uh, speaking of, I'm sorry to over over mention the Hall and Oates thing, but it was a turning point for me. Can the, we call Daryl? Let's call him at his house. Yeah, at Daryl's house. Yeah, he would love love that. Um, <laughs> the number you have reached. Yeah, you've reached yeah. Daryl. Leave me alone. No, he uh, he wouldn't want to hear from me right now. But I can say this. Um, I in in the those were heady times for me, and I just felt um, mm. very. I, I hate to use the word like I felt like I had arrived, but I really felt like I was in the right place at the right time. And these pictures were being made, and I was accumulating a really nice library of people who, who, whose, of course, I've always respected their music, and I was excited to be singing on stage with them night after night. But the the real takeaway for me was to have built this library of portraits with the two of them, and. Uh, at the end of the day, another phrase which I hate, but I just used it. At the end of the day, I went home from that tour thinking, well, I'm going to need to put all my energy into my photography now because people are responding to these pictures and it would be irresponsible if I didn't do everything possible to make myself happier and to share this gift with the world. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> um, so um, the case in point that I wanted to make to what Adam just said is that um, – a year, probably six months later, but a year later, John Oates called me and he said, I'm at the hotel in Midtown. The, where was he? Can the, you see his curly hair over the phone and the totally, mustache? Totally. It's beautiful. It almost yeah, sounded like, like you yours. were doing a British accent there. Yes. Which one? For, for Oates. Yes. Hello, Horn. It's John Oates. All right. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's, not, he's no. from Philly. Right. But so we're talking about a rock legend, so it's cooler. If so, I yeah, because you British can, as a, as a rock legend, yeah. you can definitely develop yeah. a British affectation. Oh, well, totally. look at Madonna. It's totally yeah, cool. Right. I'd like to thank Alan Parker. I'd like to thank, when she did get her um, yeah. Golden Globe Awards in 97, I'd like to thank, and then she switched to the Spanish name, Antonio Banderas. Uh-huh. <laughs> so she said that in a Spanish <laughs> accent. And then she would snap back in her, to her Detroit. But um, the one thing I, the only thing I want to say for the rest of my life is that um, John had called about a year later and he said, I really liked those pictures that you did. Can we do more? Oh. And it was fantastic. I said, of course, yeah, when? And so he, we took more pictures and one of them became his album cover. He was doing a solo record. And I was thrilled. And, and part of that was sort of buying a portion of the photographs that we had done during the tour a year prior. And again, he was very generous and fair and reasonable. And for me, that's, and maybe for most artists, it's such a nebulous area of when should I be assertive? When should I stand up for what it's I believe hard. I'm worth? It's, well, it's, it's very hard. hard with certain people, too. It's really hard. And, it, and, I can't and there's wait. also that component where it's like you want longevity with yeah. somebody that you have a rapport with. You don't want this to be like the one gig right. and then that's it. Right. Right. So he, um, the punchline to that story is that then a year after that, um, I got a call from Esquire magazine, and this I definitely told Adam, but now I'll tell Jared. I um, I got a call from Esquire, which is my favorite all-time uh, great portraiture, as as you guys may know, and they needed a full-page high-res shot. Um, so I guess John had called their, whatever, the, his press agent had called and said, well, actually, John's really fond of this one, and that turned into this massive relicensing of mm-hmm. a picture that, of course, I had made for free, years earlier on tour and yes it's, it's actually really funny oh, do you want to yes. talk to the mic saw that image in the magazine no way pointed it out to someone oh dear that's, that's a great image i hope you can hear my, you can hear do you have it there goes my ego do you, you have uh, you I, just, I have 20 have wallets have, of it it's actually my panties are made of, i have a Your underwear re, well re with all the hair cream. from john oh that's yeah it's perfect i did i wanted before you go that my run in with john please um i was shooting the hooters that night we met yes and you know most people when they see the headliners walk by right. don't say anything because right. usually the headliners you know it's like stay away right. they got the security he like i open up the door i'm just hanging out and i see john oates and i'm like hi yeah. he's like he's like hey and that was it <laughs> it was just it i mean but i wanted nice. to say hi to the guy Why it's not? funny because i was reading an article that he had written and that was the only thing he actually talked about was that meeting hi and hey and then yeah, yeah it was weird hey. no yeah. because he looked surprised i was just like What's up? Nice. No, I just, why not? I always, you catch but people. But I think that there is also a component when you see somebody who's familiar, like a celebrity. Like I had an experience once where I was walking in Rockville Center and I was doing this gig in there that was unrelated to whatever was going on um, with Billy Crystal, who I happened to walk by. And we nice. looked at each other and I said, hi, and smiled. And he said, hi, back. Yeah. And I didn't even realize I was saying it because yeah. he's so familiar that I just said, hi. Right. 
Right. You know, I didn't think I was like, it's like yeah, an old totally friend. natural, totally yeah. natural. Yeah. And that's, was, you know, you don't want to be anything other than that. Well, you he punched me in the stomach, which I really nice. didn't understand. Hey. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> He's pretty strong for a little guy. We're on the verge of your um, small bit Fonzarelli script. story. You well, were friends with the Fonz, apparently. <laughs> Indeed, like good friends. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, sl- sleepovers the oh, whole day. Yeah. Here, you, you, you mentioned something. I, I came in here. What? Ari? Ari's what? Nothing. You already mm-hmm. all laughed. We need to get you on mic more. We need to bring you an extra mm-hmm. one. Yeah, we, you saw I'm my also jacket. Thrill- I want to say I'm thrilled that Ari had seen that photo. Um, Oh yes, you made my day. It was a, it was a, it was my first full page uh, magazine editorial piece. Yeah, and and just to end on that, before we go to the jacket, I just want to say and that then I'll say something too. It's a, it's a. Uh, for me, it was a little bit of a. It was like a capsule. It encapsulated what a fairy tale can be. Of well, I'm just going to make some stuff because this feels right to be here, and I, yep. I forced <clears throat> those pictures on, and with everyone, I've taken th- tens of, as have you guys tens of thousands of pictures over the years of people whether it's artists or celebrities or friends or old people or uh cleaning ladies on the street you know bag ladies on whatever it is Well, that's like the vivian mayer stuff right right but the 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 one never knows where the lifespan of an image is going to resurface and And so that licensing for me was a huge lesson just like oh my god but and and if you didn't take those pictures in the first place because maybe you weren't making money the first time around it, you never know where these images are going to have a use. It's harder and harder. I mean, it's, it's, it's different today. We don't have the stock agencies like we used to. Very few people right. make a living off of stock photography and, right. and, and licensing like that. But sometimes, we say this all the time with photography, is that you have to take jobs that pay in order to take the jobs that don't pay sure. that you really love doing. So you may, be, may have been doing some audio recording. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the... The photography came after. Well, you've been doing photography all along. I've but done them all simul- simul- yeah. synchronously, simultaneously. I've done them both. But yes, the, my my day job for many, many years was, was producing records and mixing. Right, and that affords you the ability to go shoot whatever you want. If, some, if a band wants you to come out and shoot and hang out, and you're just hanging out, you're that guy there right. with the camera that everybody's posing for, you have those images. Whether or not they get used somewhere is always a different story, but you have them. Yep. So that's definitely... I think that, that I think that Jared's yeah. making an incredibly good and fundamental distinction because I know even for myself, I have a lot of photo jobs that are spe- that are just jobs, you mm-hmm. know, which are fantastic jobs. It's amazing work. I'm so thrilled to have it, but they're jobs. Mm-hmm. And then when what that means is that when I get offered a creative, you know, uh, shoot opportunity with somebody, a musician, a friend, or an artist, or something like that, and or I want to create something like that. I'm happy to do it because it's a creative. It's for me. It's for my own personal development. And who knows what it might lead to. It's nice often to do something that doesn't have to be a means to an end. That it's just about developing your own talent, your own creative. It's like basically a songwriting session. Mm -hmm. If like a friend of yours, you know, calls you up and say, Juan, I've got a studio in Nashville for the weekend. Why don't you come down and write with me? I'm not, there's nothing, you know, involved here. You're going to do it. Right. I've actually had that exact scenario and, and sometimes it leads to great things. Exactly. And at the very minimum, because there's no pressure on it, because you're not relying on it, mm-hmm. you're freer, I think, in some ways to be more creative and to be more open-minded mm-hmm. to trying things. Yeah. And you, and you know what the worst thing is? When somebody knows you're a photographer and they invite you somewhere, thinking, expecting you to bring your camera, but yes. they don't ask. And we just leave it home. Yeah. Like, I don't take my camera everywhere I go. That's just not my nature. You know, I'll have, a, I'll have an iPhone these days for taking whatever cell phone right. pictures happen for Instagram. Yep. But when people try to get you and, and then you get there and they're like, oh, you didn't bring your camera? Yeah. And they're all upset. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, I'm, I'm your friend and I'm here I'm a guest. to hang out. I'm not here to be the photographer. Yeah. You didn't ask. Yeah. And I, you know, I like when people just ask. Just come out straight bring forward your camera. and be like, you know what? Could you take some pictures for me? I'd rather have somebody ask me to do it and not pay me I'm just watching the Hudson go by. There's not a Sully Sullenberger going on out here right now. Sorry, we're looking out a window right to the Hudson. That is the Hudson, right? It is. It's okay. a, a sprawling special view. It's just when I saw an airplane flying by, I was just like, hey. Um, but, you know, I, I'd rather have somebody flat out say, please bring your camera. I'd love to see what you get, and maybe I'll throw you a couple bucks or just something. And But then when I get there, don't be on my ass to do every little thing that you want. Just let right. me do what I want. Let me right. be free to be you and me. Right. To, nice. to go back to a musical Marlo, reference from Marlo my Montessori Thomas. school. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was good. Marlo Thomas. That and, girl. Uh, Jared is that girl. Yeah, that's right. What? He looks like that. Were they like Muppets, by the way? No, they I don't were even humans. Remember. I they were remember humans. the album. I don't remember the... 
the, the I had the record. Red. It was like a magenta. It was like purpley magenta. Oh, yeah. Great. Color. Free to be you and me. Yeah. But there was a movie too, or a show. Wasn't there on Zoom? that girl? On, uh, it wasn't Fraggle Rock. <clears throat> I don't colors, know. Though. There were lots it, of it, it predates right. all of us here at yeah. the table. Yeah. All right, so the Did jacket. You just reference, well, we'll get to the jacket okay. in one second. Did you just reference uh, Sully, the pilot that landed the jet? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Why? That was almost lost on me. That was maybe 20 blocks. Right? Yeah, that was a little further down from here. Oh, all right, well. 30, 40, yeah. yeah. But, but he would have often, flown this flight path. Yeah, we yeah. Would have it's seen, funny that you mentioned we would have it, seen I, it. I've pondered that. I've sat here many days. and I've. If you think about it long enough, you can actually see it. Like When you see that plane up there, imagine... Parking that into the, there's a plane passing behind you right now. Is he parking? No, but can you imagine dro- like <laughs> landing that down it. into the water no. and and doing a really good job of that. Yeah, no, it's beyond comprehension. I was here that day. Yeah, like five blocks away. Oh god. And the traffic yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah, it was like it paralyzed was, the city. But yeah. nobody knew what was going well, on. Oh, yeah. I have a question. Speaking of out the window, did you see the uh, space shuttle? Did they? I have friends Go and by family. Here? They did. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't seated here, but it was a big event. Well, for those of you who don't know, when we're, we're sitting in a, an apartment that's right off the Hudson, and a lot of stuff. They they literally took space shuttle. Yeah. My Piggy not the Enterprise. discovery. That one Enterprise. blew up. Right. Yeah, it was the yeah. Ent- it's the Enterprise. No, it went on to the Enterprise. You tell me that the Enterprise went to the Enterprise. The, the, was the, wasn't the Enterprise the from Star Trek? Okay, so it's the Enterprise. I only they, know that because it's a Star Trek, Star yeah, Trek yeah, reference. Yeah. They floated it down the Hudson, basically where we're sitting. You would have seen this huge space well, William shuttle. William Shatner was driving it, yeah. as far as I know. Incredible. And then they put it up on the Intrepid. And, and in right. New York, just go to the Intrepid, the Intrepid, and you can see all that stuff. Well, I cool saw thing. it actually. I was dropping my wife off at JFK, yeah. and it, it was in like a little Kwanzaa hut. It was right. still like piggybacked onto the yeah. 747. Yeah. And I waved, and it did, didn't wave back. It didn't wave no, back. No, it just sat there, just like a space shuttle. It went around the country, I think. Didn't it go to Florida or? Cape it had a little bit of a tour, here? like a little, yeah. little mini tour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one other thing, because I, w- I do want to talk to you about your coat. The only other thing, and again, <laughs> it just for maximum accuracy and and um, efficiency. This is point nine point. No, this is like five s- section A. Section A, appendix one, okay. article two. We had been talking about. A recent um, someone approached me to shoot an actress last week, mm. and and the, our prices were right. That story where I told her, I said a th- thousand but bucks, and he said no, fifty. But bad. wait, here's the the end of that story: is that I, um, whether it's nice guy syndrome or just bad m- business management, I have always wanted to work with this guy, and I know that he is involved with a lot of cool projects and different uh, different actors and actresses. He's got a great roster and I just thought I said to him I can't really do it for that price because because I can't I don't I can't work at that price but let's just do it on spec and pro bono and we'll have drinks afterwards and maybe we'll make some cool pictures and then we'll at least have this dialogue started and that's the the for me that was it turned into a useful event and we did get really we did the shoot we got beautiful pictures out of it the actress was stunning and it was worth it at the end of yeah, the day. Yeah, there's there's know? definitely a point in time where if you accept such an incredibly discounted amount of money, then that almost sets a rate in the person's mind. Yeah, like, oh, exactly. I got one for fifty bucks. Rather do it for nothing. If it's I throw one hundred fifty bucks the next time, that'll yeah. be all right. Yeah. Whereas if you said, look, you know, this was just a way for us to see how we right. work together, test the waters. You know, yeah. there's no sweat off anybody's back. You right. don't really owe him a lot right. in the end, and you just kind of see how it goes. It also makes the shoot a lot more collaborative and uh, there's so much more freedom you already there's made this pressure. point but there's no pressure because right. basically it's my shoot at that exactly. point I own the, the That's pictures the I way own to do it. the whole dialogue is basically everyone can steer better you know of course I could lead to a, a cluster <whistles> is that a beep you can say yeah, it you can say it I mean. um, you don't want too many chefs but in this case it worked out really well and yeah. it, it made for some nice photos and, and there was just complete freedom for me to say well I don't want to take that picture because no one was paying me to do it. Sure. So we ended up. I got. I had. I felt like I had more latitude. And, no, it's fine. I mean, I just. To... I just got approached the other day to do a magazine cover shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, you get solicited a lot, by the way. I do. What corner yeah. are you on? Nice. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, you can see me there. I'm from midnight to four a.m. Nice. Um, I usually am in the red mini meatpacking uh, district. Sparkly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Where the eighteen wheelers yeah. line up. But no, I, I you know I got contacted to do this magazine cover shoot, and uh, it's not money, but it's a magazine cover, right. and it's I, a magazine cover. And right. I will have full creative control. 
Great. Which means I can shoot it with anything I want, yeah. any way I want, whatever lighting, whatever time of day. Um, so for me, and the subject matter I love, it's people that I know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really excited about doing it. So in that case, I'm loving the opportunity yeah. to do that. And I'm going to get the satisfaction of having a magazine cover out of yeah. the gig. Wonderful. And it's not going to necessarily cost me, even if it's some out-of-pocket cost. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. worth it. Yeah. Um, and congrats on that. Well. It's nice to shoot a cover. Thank you. I just went through. I'm actually in the midst of. I don't even know. Is it uncool to talk about something that's talk unresolved yet? Whatever you want. Well, I want to talk about your coat, but I would love a little uh, the coat's team still there. feedback. Go ahead. Um, I'm in the. Uh, in the. I don't know if it's a negotiation yet because we haven't talked any money. But I went. I was mentioned Ben Folds earlier. I, yeah. I was asked to go and shoot him uh, a week ago, two weeks ago now, and I went. Uh, it was for a magazine, and maybe I'll. Maybe I won't mention their name, so then I can say more Does stuff. Does it begin with an S and end with an N? That would be weird. No. <laughs> no, they're out of business. <laughs> Are they already? It's official? Uh, well, I mean, they stopped. They held their print, right? Okay, maybe. Because they weren't paying their bills. Well, it's not them, right? No. No. Spin Magazine? Yeah. It's not them. They're it's they're just them. online only for now. Yeah. Still which nice. Which is just yeah, somebody's going to buy the name again and then just do something with right. it. But anyway. Right. So I went to this thing uh, to shoot. Uh, ben Folds, who we all love. Love, right? yep. And I was excited to be there. I had met Ben 10 years ago at a TV commercial shoot for Priceline, and I made absolutely zero impression on him whatsoever. He and Lisa Loeb were doing this thing with Shatner, who you mentioned earlier. Who was one of my heroes. One of your way. heroes. Priceline so. negotiator. They nice. don't advertise with us. Nice. See? that's And you're right. Don't mention things that aren't... Uh, <laughs> that aren't advertisers so anyway so we're, i was at this thing that was years ago who cares 10 days ago i go to do these photographs uh, at steinway the oh cool, nice yeah, that was beautiful Ooh. steinway yeah so you were actually at the yeah. showroom in yeah, yeah. queens oh, oh wow no no here in new york oh, on Manhattan Street. Street. Yeah, it's like yeah. upstairs or yeah. something yeah. yeah yeah that sounds beautiful awesome. room. I've that was only, incredible i've only been there once and yeah. uh it's pretty and he was there they, they set him up on a big huge nine foot grand oh wow and so we did all these pictures, and you he was, shot him on the piano. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. awesome. But yeah. it's a nine foot, and it's a Steinway. Yeah, in the in the hall, in, in Steinway. Steinway Hall. Yeah. So it felt uh, I was I was grateful to be there, and felt it, very special. You but, just did this with your iPhone, which is amazing. Yeah. You well, Instagrammed it. I it's saw. It's funny. That. I did have all my cam. I had the real cameras, but I didn't have. There wasn't an opportunity where I could set up lights because he was in the middle of a, I'm cool with a, that. a big interview. But yeah. There's no ambient. See, I'm, I, well, I'm an amb- well. That's what the there's D4's no. for. You wrangle that light. Right. Adam's all about right. popping up flashes. And yeah. why don't you call me to assist you on those gigs? I would love that. I would love that. I just I couldn't even bring my strobes. I was it was literally and you the D700 actually... handled it fine. Right. I was up at 3200 half the time. And, nice. But and I had you know I was kind of throwing some desk lamps around the piano and. But the poor guy was trying to do, they were trying to conduct an interview of him. So I was just the sniper trying to document the interview and hopefully end up with something cool. Something cool for the. So you didn't actually for, have his direct attention where you could say, like. Occasionally I imposed it on him and I just said, Let, you know, when people would go for water, we'd ah. snap a couple more shots. But while he was talking, you know, those interview shots were like yeah, yeah. the way we're talking right yeah. now, but you get all this. Hand movement, a lot of gesticulation. And all this. I see the pictures in my yeah. mind right now. Yeah, yeah. I just see sitting here how yeah. I would shoot it. Yeah, but that's just how the brain works. So next time I'm bringing all of you with me, and we'll just do a, a shootout on the guy. Oh, um, well, he can play. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to listen to that. Yeah. I know Ari would love to listen yeah. to that. Well, so the the end of that story is simply that I haven't set a price yet. Of course, they want the uh, they love the pictures, and now the that magazine's going to go to press in whatever in three weeks right and they're gonna print them before they pay you aren't they they always do. I, well i wouldn't let that because i've only sent them low res proofs with They'll a watermark oh all right the so watermark is a sh- big obnoxious schmear of schmear yeah it's like a big there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm at a point and i also shot video which i don't do which i don't you claim do to with? do with the d7000 oh all right right yeah. right right on a tripod and yeah. and uh it works fine flip phone and uh G12. I was doing a handy wow. cam on the G12, just kind of floating while I was shooting stills with this one. You know, you know what I like to do. Please. I put a uh, first-person shooter camera on top of the hot shoe. Nice. Basically, I put like you, you know, it's a contour cam. You yeah. can use a GoPro. Yeah. You put it on top so that when you're shooting photos, 
it's your first person perspective. It's seeing what you're shooting. Oh, so it's but it's rolling video yeah. the whole time. Right. Yeah, HD video. That's a great a GoPro up there. Would be you great. could put a GoPro there. You could use the Contour. I haven't bought a GoPro. I have to buy one just to try it out. Is there a cold shoe that would? Yes, mount they the... sell they sell a mount for it. It's like nine bucks, and then there's an attachment, and boom, you're good to go. You, you could know, also mount it on top of your umbrella hat. Not right. Mount for that. Too. Great idea. Yeah, it's perfect. But the other thing I want, if you guys are sorting out stuff for my birthday, is a a cold shoe that would let me mount the G12 on top of the D700. Totally that. That's simple. Yeah, but I wanted to trigger. I wanted to fire the. G12 simultaneously. So That's I'm getting a little more difficult. Simultaneous. One's a Nikon, one's a Canon. shots. But I think with a pocket wizard, you can have one feed the... There's got to be a way to trigger... With a hot shoe inside of a hot shoe. shoe through the sink cable. It's possible with yeah. the, what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the pocket wizards can help to fire other cameras. They can. Yep. Which I've yeah. never used them for, but... Yeah, because they're, they're agnostic when it comes to that. We, you can use the right. plus threes to do that. I was raised Catholic. Um <laughs> Jewish. Did you hear about the um, agnostic insomniac dyslexic? I haven't. He'd stay up all night wondering if there really was a dog. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Get home safe. Thank you. <laughs> Don't right. We were at the. Uh, we were at <laughs> flatline. <laughs> well, we were at the. the they're going to go to press in a couple weeks. Yes. Uh, so, so basically, you're trying to determine. What kind of a price to set? Absolutely. And yeah. are you doing now? Is this a full spread? Is it a full page uh, yeah. spread? Well, it, hopefully it's the cover. So oh, from snap. that, hof, hof, from that, uh, would hopefully we spawned a cover in that shoot. And you then can't of say what magazine. Of, Circulation, big magazine, big, big music magazine, yeah. like local or national, national, oh, international, yeah. international. Yeah, man of mystery. Yes, but and, I don't want to say from because this I don't, impromptu shoot. Yeah, they want to use. This Dude, is hard. Absolutely. What's their budget? First question, what's yeah. your budget? What yeah. do you normally pay people for? The, not what do you normally pay, but what is in your budget? What generally is the going My rate? My guess because is that there's a difference between what they're going to pay somebody like Juan and what they would pay some... Like Mark Seliger. Really right. known guy. So exactly. the, for you, it's a manage, matter of managing the middle ground. Right. Because that guy's going to just charge an outrageous amount because he just gets it. His name yeah. dictates that. But then that. again, it's a cover, and you'd kind of bend over right. backwards. Like I would want. Except that we have the shots. Like that, you I, have what I they have want. The, yeah. However, so just work together. What yeah. can we do to make this work? Yeah. Right. That's, I ask that question all the time when people yeah. when people are are you're negotiating it, things, and you just get to the point. It's like, look, where do we need to be to make this work? Right. Fair for me, fair for you. Let's get it done because right. all I want to do is shoot. Right. Right, and the other thing too that that Jared is a strong advocate of, and that I too agree with, and I think is a really good thing in these kind of situations, is get whomever you need to talk to on the phone, because right. firing back emails, oh, you don't yeah. really get the context of this. You could right. name a number; it's all numbers. It's so impersonal. Right. When they're actually talking to you, they will react differently. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we know Ari knows how I am with email. Just like I just sit there and I just say it like it is through email, yeah. and that's just blunt. Yeah. And but people when you don't get, go for that, so no, well. they don't go for it because it's just I don't I don't beat around the bush, dance around the chicken tree right. or anything like that. <laughs> I right. just I just make I just say it like it is, like get it done. Yeah, or this is what I need. But in that's this case, funny. the phone call is the best thing to do. Yeah, it will be a phone. The phone call is imminent. It's and you just say, you say look, tomorrow. you know, I, we just need to talk. What's the best time to reach you? What number right. can I reach you at? Here's my cell. Call me. Blah blah blah. And that, right. that's true in any client, like especially weddings. It's like right. don't deal with me through email. Deal with me on the phone. Yeah, right. yeah when it comes to these kinds of negotiations, you you, you, you want the personal the personal right. bit. Look, I've done magazine shoots that 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 you and I have done these prestigious magazine shoots for that very lu high end luxury. That's right. Magazine that that we we, we didn't we, tell we actually Jared could yet. name. And it turns out they, Adam is my competitor. I didn't re realize this until you guys dinner. are going up for the same job. We've been doing the same job, but they have job they have the a same set, magazine. They have a set rate, so there's, it's non negotiable. Whether they use it for not whatever, negotiable. I mean, <laughs> the negotiation would be like, we want this, and they're going to say, no. Here's what we can pay you. Yeah, it's a bit low too, by the way. Yeah. Mind you, indeed. Well, that's because you two have been driving the price down because you both want the job. Yeah. No, that's we haven't. Funny. I don't think you and I have been, con, you know contentious about it i of always jobs. i have why don't you go in together because together we are heavy right well they just they, they you know they say, i say is that patino guy on the shoot right. and then they say yes and then i just come in 25 dollars cheaper right. and they're just right. like done right so i heard that you were saying to them things like have you noticed i mean one's such a great guy but have you noticed that his stuff is kind of blurry 
Yeah. Did you say that? Did you say that? Well, I was also mentioning that whole kind of like hygiene issue. Yeah, yeah. That 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 it's not really. Yeah. Yeah. What's with the beard? I mean, I have no room to talk about hair, so. I would kill for that for that setup. Hey, you know. Yeah, there's Give definitely a party tips. on top, on the side, and in yeah. the back. In the <laughs> back, and it's a party all around. Yeah. We need to, it's like a it's it's beyond a frolic at this yeah. point. <laughs> a frolic. That's fantastic. It's all a right. work of art. Oh, here we go. Let's get to that jacket thing. The coat, please. Um, you well, it's a really short story. It's more of like a sentence, I think. Well, Jared walked in with this gorgeous story. Serpico, Starsky and Hutch leather jacket oh, from yeah. 1977. Oh, yeah. And as I was trying to remind him that he and I had had a, a rather momentous introduction in Philly three years earlier, he kept staring back at me blankly. Clearly, I hadn't made any sort of a visual impact on him at all. And whilst trying to re-befriend him, I, um, I made claims on his coat. And I love that coat, and I, I'd i like for you to leave it with me. So Period. essentially, oh. is that a story? Before or is that Jared's a story response, because he's going to respond in a minute, the only reason... That you agreed to do this. It's for the coat. Podcast. It was for the coat. Like yeah. there's, there's really nothing. Beyond I don't need that. to talk photography. No, with you guys. We could, yeah, you, you don't even really take pictures, do you? I don't even own a camera. Okay. <laughs> I don't. The, the story behind this, uh, the the coat, the jacket. Yeah. We were in Pomona. Yeah. Ari was there. We ate at that really bad Italian. It wasn't that bad of an Italian restaurant, but we were playing the broken glass. The glass house. The glass house in Pomona. Mm. And there was a vintage store right across the street. And we were on tour with Perry Farrell, who loves vintage everything. Yeah. But we walked over there, and there was this, this jacket calling my name. And it was marked like 45 bucks. Yeah. And you know when you're on the road, you get per diem? Yeah. So I'm sitting there with like a couple grand in per diem because I never spent my money. Mm-hmm. Actually, I was saving up for when Ari got back the tour because we, like, we had a whole deal. I think we talked about this in episode seven. Eight? eight? It was eight. Ari and I talked about that in episode eight. Actually, we didn't even go talk about the Perry tour too much, but... I saw that jacket, put it on. It was awesome. And I even remember Perry commenting on how awesome. Jared, that jacket's so awesome. Nice. Wait, that's a song. He nice. had awesome as a song, Ari. Oh, but nice. anyway. It's meant to be. The jacket needs some work. Yeah. It needs the li- The lining has tr- uh, been torn to shreds it's just shredded. from wearing it. Well, it's probably, I bet it arrived to you partly in that condition. It's the it's the rear seam along the back panel. And the, the, the hands in the pocket, the po- hands go right through the bottom of the jacket yeah. now. Yeah. Um, because there's, I think I had hair picks in there. Downtown, I can send you. You told me that. Yeah, well, I we've got one. Ramon. I've got one too. Ramon on. Uh, yeah. What are we talking about? Mulberry. Kim's cleaners. What kind of price are we talking about here? Sixty bucks. We also have Consuela on Tenth Avenue, who's Ecuadorian, Consuela. and she could do it for thirty dollars. No, I rather go for sixty. Yeah, I rather go for the person yeah. that wants to charge me yeah. more. It's yeah. just See? like that's case in point. It's yeah. like, oh, you're going to charge me sixty? They're going to charge me thirty? You know what? Yeah. I'm going to give it to you Ramon, for sixty. Yeah. The Ramon place is expensive, but I can say that they've repaired. All of my leather chaps and yeah. done phenomenal. Oh God, <laughs> ass uh, yeah. 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 Why is it that for all grown men of mm-hmm. our ilk, the, the, the any mention of chaps has to be followed with assless soon thereafter? <laughs> I don't know. It's like fart jokes; they never yeah. stop being. They funny. never stop. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, guys, I really uh, want thank you for letting us into thank your. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure. I, I have so much more to tell, but let's. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for a part two. Done. We'll have to come back and bring right. in some uh, other special guests Please. if we can have. Let's do it. Can Can Lisa sing like in between intermission? Absolutely. We'd be like, I'd be like, yay! <laughs> you come on, stay. Come on, nice. do it. Adam, thank you for being here. Awesome, it was awesome. Thank you. Uh, and you guys out there, thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed this from New York City. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com. See ya. Did you enjoy that podcast? Yes, I enjoyed it as well. So I hope you enjoyed this week's Frono's Photo Raw Talk. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. You can listen to new episodes automatically when they get downloaded to your iPod, iPad, iPhone, iComputer, i justine anything that it gets downloaded to you can listen to and you don't even need to have itunes to listen to the podcast because it is available on fronosphoto.com slash podcast each week so i want to thank you guys for listening week in and week out it is much appreciated or i really appreciate it and i want to thank alanscamera.com for their support check out alanscamera.com for all of your camera needs if you are in the united states of america you can shop in your underwear anytime that you want to purchase whatever you'd like whether it's nikon canon sony olympus you name it they've got new they've got used they'll help you out check out alanscamera.com so guys 
for the future. Stay tuned for more podcasts. We're going to be taking it on the road while I am not in my loft. And we're going to bring you some interesting characters along the way. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Don't forget about the website. Check it out. Enjoy it. Love it. Live it. Learn it. Fro knows photo.com. See ya.